Welcome to Wellesley College Television's Boob Tube. I'm Anjali Sundaram. And I'm Tavia Smith. April is National Poetry Writing Month. And in honor of this literary occasion, we here at Boob Tube have written a haiku to the lovely Wellesley College administration. For the love of God, do not raise our tuition. Seriously, don't. Spog kicked off the long weekend with a Freaky Friday themed party. Our sources tell us that the events organizers saved big on decorations due to the fact that any on-campus activity on a Friday is inherently freaky. The University of California, Irvine has just released a study saying wine increases our longevity better than exercise. Who knew the real winners of Marathon Monday were the day drinkers? And now, the seven people you will date at Wellesley. This is you. And these are the people you'll date at Wellesley. The closet case. She's perfect. She owns vans and multiple flannels. But you just can't shake the feeling that something is off with your relationship. She never wants to hang out with you in a group and her room has a surprising lack of rainbows. You realize you've been gal palled. The athlete. Your idea of exercise is walking from the quad to east side. She looks great in athletic clothes and a ponytail. Things in her gym bag include sneakers, a protein bar, and a portable full-sized printer. Ultimately, however, her demanding schedule will be too much for your relationship. The Harvard boy. So, you finally downloaded Tinder and met the boy your parents have always dreamed of. He was top of his class in high school, but you're having trouble relating to someone who can afford his own fleet of yachts. You're pretty sure if it came down to it, he would pick a nice flybridge over you. The girl you met at pub. You thought she was a random hookup, but then you went back to your room and spent the night talking about Foucault's Panopticon and fell in love. But soon she'll convince you that you don't need to go to pub anymore. In fact, you don't need to spend any time with anyone except for her, and you'll realize you're the one living in the Panopticon. The Wanda. You met her when you both showed up a little late to your org meeting. You've never seen her actually come to a meeting before, but now that you've met her, you're so glad. She's always awake for a late night chat, and her laid back attitude is refreshing. Refreshing, that is, until the tenth time she cancels on you at the last minute. Soon you realize she's not more laid back than anyone else here. She just saves her stress for last minute spurts that you really don't have time to deal with. As with everything else she does, she'll procrastinate on breaking up with you until long after you've seen it coming. The close friend. You've known each other since day one. You were in the same FYM group and it just makes sense. She knows you better than anyone else, but you're starting to think that might not be a good thing. It can be nice to have a friend psychoanalyzing your current relationship in terms of your past mistakes, but not when you're dating that person. You share four years of memory that will keep you bonded forever or at least until your inevitable breakup destroys your friend group and ruins senior spring. The perfect one. Finally, you have found someone ideal. She has all the same interests as you. She loves the environment. She reads Shakespeare for fun. And she gets along well with your new friends. Too bad you met her just before graduation. Better luck in grad school, kid. Steven Spielberg is cool with a female Indiana Jones, or as he calls it, Indiana Joan. This just in, an Academy Award winning director doesn't know how last names work. Kim Jong-un has promised to address denuclearization in an upcoming meeting with President Trump. While they may not be using the traditional pinky promise, they will be exchanging the lunches their moms packed, so you could say it's legal. And now, Georgie on the street. Hey Wellesley, so Spring Open Campus happened recently and it got me thinking, what do I wish I had known about Wellesley before coming here? So I'm gonna ask some people about that. And uh, yeah, also I'm a senior. That's why we're doing this. Okay, let's go. <laughs> You're a senior, how's that feel? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's the mood. Great. Not great. Terrifying. I have no plans, no future. <laughs> Help. Is there anything you wish you had known before you got to Wellesley? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if 
I came in with expectations? I wish I knew that the dining halls closed at 7 o'clock so I would have more consistent money for snacks. Uh, that I was like selling my soul. A lot of people eat way more bananas than I thought. The picture that it sells is not what it is. So I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but I guess on a more positive note that I would like meet the people who are my family now. And so maybe I would have been a little less terrified about coming here if I'd known that. That's amazing. That's so good. There's so many dogs. Actually, I wish I had known about the dogs because I would have been way more excited about coming here. One time I walked from Claflin to Clap and I bumped into eight dogs. The weather doesn't make the naked run as feasible as you'd think it would be. And that everyone runs. I don't Everyone? Know. Everyone. The naked run across Sev Green? Oh yeah. It can get really lonely here when you're not expecting it to be. Wellesley wasn't all that bad. It was good. It was fun. I've been crying since I got to Wellesley. I made good friendships. I hope you survive. Georgia on the street is all about uh, feelings and emotions and uh, letting them out. Like, ah! This seems like the most fun job in the goddamn world yeah. is what I've learned. So as you can see, um, people at Wellesley, they've had very varied experiences and I think that's really valid. Um, hey, what's up? I'm replacing you. Sorry? I'm gonna be you. Oh my god, yeah, I totally forgot. Um, hey, everyone, this is Avril. Um, she's gonna be the new on the street person um, after I uh, graduate. Uh, so yeah, and I think she'll do a really great job. And I'm so excited. Um, so do you want to do the honors? This is Georgie on the street. I'm Avril. Back to the studio. <laughs> Paul Ryan announced that he will not be seeking re-election. He's like me during senior spring, making a total mess of things and then being like, peace out, losers. Thanks for watching BoopTube. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And remember, stay perky. For the last time. Her last time. Bye. Oh, no. <laughs>